Welcome to today's edition of the Peanut Gallery. My guest today is the superintendent of schools at Westell School Corporation, Mr. Kyle Meanley. Welcome, Kyle. Chris, thanks for having me. I appreciate it. I, uh, hopefully that uh, you'll get a few viewers on this one. I don't know if it'll be your most interesting <laughs> one. <laughs> um, Kyle, I know you have served in many capacities over the years in education. You were an art teacher. Um, I believe you're an athletic director. Yeah, art teacher, um, athletic director, assistant principal, principal, and now superintendent. Um, talk a little bit about your climb through those different areas and how you got to where you are today as superintendent. Sure. Um, you know, it started out, the biggest thing for me was I uh, really um, had a great experience with art uh, education and was good at it. So that's kind of what got me there. Uh, I knew I wasn't good at math. I knew I wasn't good at English. And uh, my mom was a teacher and my grandmother was a teacher, uh, aunts, uh, cousins. So I wanted to do that. But honestly, I wanted to coach. So I had uh, good experiences uh, growing up through athletics and I wanted to coach. So that got me into the education side of things. And from there, um, I really didn't realize I wanted to be a, a school administrator starting out. Uh, I thought, well, I'll just teach and coach. And I wanted to be a 35, 40 year coach, you know, and, and, and really that's, that was my ambition at the time, but administration can be a lot like coaching. So uh, I had some good mentors at, at Bluffton high school when I was up there, I did some coaching up there and then I did my student teaching up there and Wayne Barker, uh, who is now the superintendent, I be, believe at Mishawaka. Um, and, um, Steve Baker, the principal there, they actually just stopped me when I was a student teacher and said, you know, you've got some makeup inside of you that would be a good administrator. So that led me on that path. I went back to school, got my administrator's license and was really selective about where I wanted to go. And I'll be honest, I wanted to be, you know, where home was when I taught there at Blackford. I wanted to stay at home, but opportunity wasn't there. So um, I had an opportunity at, at uh, uh, Westell and interviewed for the assistant principal's position, didn't get it. Um, but they called me back to be the AD and I never really even thought about that. Um, so I had a long conversation with a good friend, Marty Daniel, and Marty told me, you know, I think it's a great way to open the door and long story short, Marty was probably the most, uh, that was probably his, uh, future reading there because I moved up all of the seats. The only seat I haven't been administratively at Westell is the elementary principal. So like I said, getting into it and what my quick ad or my excuse me my quick or rapid rise is nothing really other than I think that I work hard uh, I think that's probably me, my biggest thing there there may be a few teachers that have had me in the past that might watch this and uh, if they've picked themselves up off the floor now that they found out I'm a superintendent and they've they've calmed down a little bit and realized uh, you know I grew up a lot and uh, a lot of that was because of a lot of the people that I had but uh, I just surrounded myself with really good people all my life. And I attribute that to really what helped me that and hard work helped me get to my position now. Um, COVID-19 has affected everybody and, and hit schools harder than anything. Um, talk about having to adapt on the run. I mean, you've had to deal with, uh, uh, I don't know if you guys had e-learning or not, but I know some schools that did that helped some that didn't had to find a way real quick. And then also how you've had to handle, um, senior situations with uh, uh, graduations and so on. I've watched um, some of the things that you've done at West L and, and really been impressed with how you handled that. Just talk a little bit about the process and what all you've done. Uh, COVID-19 is something that if I have to hear the word um, unprecedented <laughs> one more time, I'm going to lose my mind. Um, and I hate the term, the new normal. Um, yes. But besides that, you know, it just, you know, we were there Thursday night. I think it was, uh, March 13th or 14th, I can't remember exactly. And we were having parent-teacher conferences that night. And the very next day we were headed into an e-learning. And to answer your e-learning, we just put in e-learning this year. So our teachers really had about two or three days of experience with e-learning where we actually used it throughout the school year. Going into that Friday when it all kind of hit and we were, everybody was closed. Um, so we're at parent-teacher conferences that night, and a group of us are standing there, administrators, Co you know, Coach McLaughlin, some other people there, and we're talking about it, and it's like anybody else. We had no idea that we wouldn't see any of our students 
the rest of the year. So to adapt to that, um, it was really kind of flying the plane while you're building it for teachers, especially um, more, dis you know, and there were districts in our area that didn't have e-learning and uh, they had to literally do it, you know, while, while right, right there on the ground and build it. So it was incredibly difficult, but I would say in watching everyone and knowing everyone um, and, and seeing all the other school districts, everybody did what they had to do and made it happen, which is an, a huge shout out to all the other leaders, all the other administrators, building principals, but especially the teachers to just be able to change that quickly. Um, that's, that's amazing to me. So what we did was, um, you know, we kind of looked at where we were, what we could do. And um, we have Chromebooks for every student. So we were able to do that. Some schools didn't, that's a difficulty. Um, but we made it happen even if kids didn't have access to internet. And uh, I think the parents and the students also, if you've got good parents, students and teachers, you can do just about anything. And most school districts do. So I think it, it, it really, now I'll be honest, was it effective teaching? You know, it was effective as it could be. I mean, it was 100% the best the teachers and administrators in school districts could do. But I think it also shows that we've got to get back into the buildings at some point and get these kids back to face-to-face -to -face instruction. So um, some things that we really found challenging with our, with our seniors is obviously it doesn't really hit you because I had my senior year. So I can't, t I can't say that I know what they feel because I can't. Um, for them, you know, and, and, and they live their lives a lot on social media. So a lot of that emotion was out there and, and very warranted for them to do that. So what we had to do was figure out at Westdale, every kid is so, it's, our goal is to make every kid feel like they're the most important kid in the building. So that especially comes true with your class of 2020. What do you do? How do you do this? And everybody's telling you, well, they're going to shut you down. They're not going to let you do this and they're not going to let you do that. What we sat down and said was, number one, our number one goal was, we're going to do something. We're going to make something happen for these kids. It may not be exactly the way they want it to be, but we've got to give them something. So our initial thought was to do a drive-through, uh, or not drive-through, but drive-in type of graduation ceremony. Um, and actually, I think Jay County did did do that. And then yes. Jeremy Gully, their superintendent, got in contact with me and really liked that idea. And another Blackford guy right there who, um, who made something amazing happen for his students. So um, I won't go into detail about that. That'd be a great conversation to have with Jeremy on how they pulled that off. But our board decided they, that once we heard that they were going to back it up and possibly open things up in July, they decided to pull off of the drive in graduation, which was basically cars in the parking lot, distanced screen, same, same ceremony, just outside as traditional as we could get outside. And um, then we've shifted to, I think we're July 12th now and trying to have graduation as traditional as we can. Um, you're still gonna, you're still gonna not meet things. We have several students going to the military and I'll be honest with you. Uh, I thought what Chad Yenser did and Blackford did for a lot of their students, they're going to the military out in front of the school. I don't know if you saw that on Facebook, yes, big shout out to those guys and, and what they did. I thought that was awesome, you know? And so we're actually going to steal it. We're going to, we've got a couple of kids that are going to the military and we're going to do the same type of ceremony for their families out in front, but we're trying prom, but the health department tells us that's a tough one. Uh, we're trying to do that on the 18th of July and I can understand why that could be difficult. Um, but honestly, there was no, there was no one to, look at for an example, for any of us, there was no one to say, um, here's the template, go from here on this whole COVID thing. But I, I will tell you this, the, the county superintendents and honestly, the state superintendents are such a close group that you can pick up the phone and ask somebody clear across the state a question and they'll give you an answer. And you've got to look at, I've got a couple connections with Brian Roush and Reese Mann here in my county. Um, again, I think Blackford's raised quite a few, uh, quite a few good administrators out there, and uh, they were very helpful. So, just long answer, but to be honest with you, we just had no idea what to do, and we just put it together. And I've got an amazing administrative team. So, it, it surrounding yourself by people that are better than you and smarter than you is really what anybody should do. And I did that, and 
they made it really easy on me, made me look good. And honestly, it was all them. Speaking of your administrative team, obviously you had to come together to take care of all of these kinds of things. Um, you guys also went around uh, on a minibus, delivered signs, I believe to your teachers, went through eight counties. Talk a little bit about that. And uh, obviously that was a long, long night getting yeah. done at four o'clock in the morning. Well, we're still friends. So <laughs> that's good. Cause uh, we had, we had uh, at the time we had uh, the principal, high school principal, we had the assistant principal, we had the athletic director. Um, we had our assistant principal at the elementary at the time, but now he's going to be our director of student learning. And uh, we had our SRO with us, our student resource officer. And we get along really, really well, um, which doesn't always happen at places. But at this place, we've built a team that just gets along really well. So we, we 15 hours in a minibus, uh, eight counties, I think four or five high schools we passed. And we remained friends through the thing with a couple breakdowns. I mean, there were a couple moments. I know that I passed my house specifically four times because <laughs> somebody didn't make the map quite right. Um, and the best part about that was at 930 at night after we'd been traveling around our SRO, uh, it was kind of like dumb and dumber when he says he has two pairs of gloves, you know, because they're in the Rockies. Our yeah. SRO reaches up and pulls out of his bag. He goes, well, I have a map of everything. This is at 930. We started at one. And I kind of <laughs> thought that would have been helpful information to have earlier, you know, but uh, the idea came from uh, Adam Purdue, our, our principal, and Adam is really you know, I think he's one of the uh, up and coming strongest uh, principals in the area that we have. Uh, we've got a lot of good principals around this area and around the state, but I think Adam's going to be one of the great ones. And uh, he just said, you know, I want to find a way to really reach out and, and let our teachers during a teacher's appreciation week know that we care about them because we love all of our educators. We love all our kids. We love everything about Westell and we want to show that and appreciation is a big part. So we get a mini bus and we travel all over and we had to fill it up twice, but uh, it, it, it was fun. And I think it really showed, our, uh, I hope it showed our teachers how much we value what they did. Honestly, not just what they did every or what they do every day, but what we just talked about, shutting everything down, but still keeping everything going. Um, that was just remarkable. And I don't know that the teachers really, get enough appreciation for what they did with no guidance really from you know that shutdown in March and then we finally got moving but I think it was just that but um, we did yard signs and we did a little gift basket for them and uh, again uh, I also want to thank our spouses because the, they, they were like uh, and Courtney uh, my wife was the first one to say I said well you know we're looking at maybe six hours and she goes there's no way you're getting that done in six hours <laughs> 15 hours later, we came back, but um, our, our goal really is to, you know, sometimes in schools and, and, and you just don't, you never, I remember it as a teacher, some places I did, some places I didn't, you never really get that pat on the back. It's, it's forgotten and not by choice. It's just, we all get busy and we forget. And as administrators, you can easily get caught up in what you're doing and not do enough for your teachers, but you can't forget what it was like to be in that classroom, to be that teacher, to be that coach. No matter what you move up to, you have to remember that. And that was instilled in me by my mom. Um, you know, she told me, don't ever forget where you came from. And uh, I don't. And that was what that was all about is, I'll drive 15 hours uh, with a bunch of guys who care about people and we'd do it again. Um, this time it might be a little bit more uh, difficult to get in the van and get started, but we do it again. And, um, you know, there was a lot of other people doing a lot of things that didn't get as much attention. You know, I know Muncie community did a lot of things for their staff. I know that just about every administrator did some things and, and we put ours, we were on social media quite a bit. So we put ours out there and it, it was really seen, but um, there's a lot of things going on that don't that everyone doesn't see that all districts are doing. I mean, you you know, at Monroe Central they do fantastic things there. Um, ours just happened to be seen, and we went 15 hours in a minibus, and people were like, "Wow, that's commitment!" But it's because we love our people, so that's kind of why we did that. Well, I know I really uh, uh, appreciated seeing your pictures and and just hearing about that. Um, also, besides COVID. Um, 19 we you've also had some building projects going on and some other things there at the school talk about the progress of that and how that's come along 
uh, we, we just uh, did a uh, renovation of the front entrance. A lot of people are doing that. Um, the three point of entry, you know, as you get access to your buildings because of the day, you know, and the time we live in, it's sad to say, but we have to do that. We have to restrict our access a little bit more. Um, we did that at the elementary and we put in new offices and honestly, we needed to put in a few new classrooms, which is a great problem to have. That means that you're attracting students. Um, you know, we're a state of school of choice. So, so 20, 24% of our enrollment is transfer students. So, um, that's good to have. And I think everybody feels that. I know at Monroe Central, they feel that transfer and, and those have become vital. So we have to do some things um, in, this, in this day and age of marketing. And also that includes some upgrades to your building. And um, when you do that and you, it shows you what your community is about. And our community came together and they said, uh, yeah, we want to do these things. So new offices at the elementary, um, they needed them. Uh, they were very small. Uh, they're more centrally located. And then the classrooms are really nice to have. And then at the high school, that's the one, the middle high school, that's the one that everybody sees because they drive by on 28 and they see this, this massive building off to the side there. Um, that's our field house. Um, I'm not a big auxiliary gym guy and everybody in my district will laugh when they see this, if they, if they do. <laughs> but uh, they know that I can't stand the term auxiliary gym just because I don't like aux gym. I wanted something else. So it's going to be the Warrior Field House. It has two courts inside of there. Um, and there, it's, it's continuous hardwood across there. And the way we designed it, and I want to thank, uh, first of all, Mike Bush, former superintendent before me. Mike's had a 30-plus year career at Westell. He really came up with this idea, and it, it, it started with his tenure there. And then when he, his last year, I kind of inherited this. But he stayed on as my building project uh, manager, which really helped. And I want to thank the board for having this vision and, and saying we want, we want to invest in Westell. We, we want to invest in what we're doing because we think we're doing really good things. So it's got two courts, hardwood across. It's, it's designed so that you can bring your football team in and have about 50 yards. Uh, the ceiling, the reason it's a field house, the ceiling's designed to be large enough that you can throw a football. You can hit uh, fly balls as best you can inside there. Our softball team can do a full infield. Uh, baseball can get pretty close to that inside of there. Um, upstairs in, in that room, we're going to have uh, batting cages in, in an area that's above our weight room. Put a new weight room inside there. Inside those batting cages, uh, we're going to get uh, netting small enough that our golf team can practice in there. Pull those cages up and your color guard and your cheer team can practice up inside of there uh, in that extra facility. Two new locker rooms, a new concession stand area. Uh, an additional classroom where our old weight room used to be, which will be our health room. And so our, our PE department will all be housed down on that end uh, during the day. Uh, put $75,000 worth of equipment into our weight room. I would say our weight room would uh, rival anybody's in the county right now. Um, and the reason for that, a lot of people say, well, that's a lot of athletics. That's a lot of athletics. Well, you know, they don't see the elementary side because that's down in, in Gaston and it's off the road. So you don't really see it. But it's not just that. Our band can go down to that facility and, and practice their marching, and, and we're going to. We have a track around the outside of our two courts that we want to bring our community. When all this COVID stuff settles down, uh, the intent is to bring the community in for walking. And our community out there, they, they don't have access to something like that. So it was also to bring in our community uh, to be able to utilize this facility. Youth sports, it allows us to do a lot with our volleyball program. Uh, honestly, with our flag football program, if the weather's not good, we can still make some things happen inside. Um, basketball, obviously, we can run our youth program that Coach McLaughlin. So, you know, the, another thing as we sit here and talk, Chris, is, you know, our head volleyball coach is Biff Wilson. He's a Blackford guy. Uh, head basketball coach is John McLaughlin. He's a, a Blackford guy. Uh, they're running tremendous programs and youth sports. And so that was a way to build their their programs up and build our youth up. But uh, We've got a lot of good things happening over there. And the building project was really a good experience for me in my first couple of years as superintendent. Uh, but I think it's, it shows to me the commitment of West Elk Community Schools, the community and the people and the board and, and investing. So that's, that's, it's really nice to have. That's great. I know I've enjoyed just seeing the progress of it uh, going by and being at your school a few times. So uh, I'm sure that everybody's anxious to be able to, use that and oh yeah see it is like you said some of the 
some of the community probably hasn't even had a chance to get out there and see Oh, no. It. Yeah, of course you build something and then a pandemic hits. <laughs> and you know how that works. <laughs> of course. Yeah, yeah, so you can't, so nobody can use it. Now, you've been an athletic director. You've been a coach. You've been an athlete, obviously. I, I recall those days. Um, how would have it hit you to find out, hey, you're not going to get to play baseball your senior year of high school or whatever sport it might have been? Yeah. How do you think that would have hit you? Uh, it would have hit me really, really hard. Um, you know, baseball was my first love. So to hit this at this point and then, you know, personally to watch my nephew, who's a senior um, at Blackford, to watch him lose that, um, I, I can't even put into words what that would be like because those – that last season, honestly, of my senior year is where a lot of my memories lay. I mean – I can, I can think of the other seasons and I can go back to Babe Ruth and go back to Little League and, th and remember some of that. But I can specifically remember games my senior year. Uh, I, think I, I think I had the wherewithal to, to know this is, this is it for me. I'm not going to college to play sports, so I really need to enjoy this. If, if I had that mindset on March 13th and then March 14th, it's all gone. I, you know, I don't know what I would do. And I, I can't, my heart goes out to those kids because I, it's literally having something just feel like it's ripped away from you. And um, then I think of the coaches and I think of the parents. I mean, as a parent, I don't know because my oldest is an eighth grader. Now I know he didn't get to play his, his baseball this year. And that was hard enough for us, right. but to, to be your senior year, and then my heart goes out to those parents. I mean, Sometimes it's almost, uh, and my dad used to say this, you know, you remember the old line whenever dad was trying to, you know, <laughs> get in line and say, this hurts me more than it hurts you. you know, <laughs> I don't know how many people out there had that, but believe me, I had that a lot. Um, but it, it definitely might hurt the parents more than the kids just to, just to know that they don't have that opportunity. So I don't, I don't know what that would be like. I can't put into words what that would be like. I watch our kids and it, and it, our Westell kids, and it just, it kills me to see it. Um, we were we had a really good team coming in in both softball and in uh, baseball, and our track program we had we had a, a good program going there, um, and then with golf, I mean you you talk about all the sports we were really excited, um, but you know you, you do what you can you give them the best you can uh, you honor them as best you can I think our athletic director Kai Denny's done a nice job I think all athletic directors. I've done a really nice job of doing some social media stuff to honor those, but it doesn't replace the season. So I feel for them. I really do. You were in athletics, obviously, for a long time um, and then maintained that. Obviously, it had an impact on you. You wanted to be a coach and, and get involved in athletics uh, beyond your high school days. Um, how much do you think athletics has changed over the years and then – I don't, want to, I don't want to ask you to look into a crystal ball because I talked to the IHSAA commissioner this week and we even he didn't even want to look too far into the fall because he said that he, he said doing that would be like trying to cancel a baseball game because of the rain predicted three days from now. Right. But uh, how do you think things may change this fall when athletes pick back up? Well, uh, the first question about, you know, the changes from when I was in school um, – the thing that I see that changes and, and, and I don't want to put a lot on the kids and I don't want it to, to come off wrong, but you know, um, leadership, just leadership in athletics is different. I don't know that it's not there. And I, and I mean that on the kids. I mean that on the student athlete, not so much the coaches. The coaches are still, I, I see a lot of the same uh, type of coaching, the same type of theory, the same type of strategies and coaching and, and all that philosophy, but it, it's, it's being around the kids are different. And uh, I used to hear people say that, you know, I remember, you know, Bob Knight, Coach Knight, and people like that would say when they got out, well, the kids are different. The kids are different. I'd say, oh, that's an easy excuse. But it really is. And I don't mean it in a bad way. The, the, the talent level is amazing. I mean, I watch, I watch high school basketball and I think to myself, man, I, it's, it's way better than it was when I played talent-wise. Fundamental-wise, I don't know that it's as strong as it used to be. Um, now I sound like an old guy and, and I thought I'd never get there, but I'm starting to sound like that old guy. But anyway, um, I just look at the leadership and I think it's, it's another reason why I think we have to get back to school is face to face and the ability to, to lead face to face and to question whether someone is doing what they need to do and push them. Um, I had great coaches, but I also had great 
uh, peers that were coaches. You know, one that I, I mean, I can name off ton of them, but, you know, I played with Tori Dietz, whose dad was a coach. Uh, if you didn't do what you were supposed to do, Tori was going to get in your face and he was going to let you know about it. And at the same token, we would come back at him and he handled it just fine. He was harder on himself than anybody was. But you, you look at that and we had guys that would grab you in the locker room, not in a bad way, but they just, you know, they're not physically hurting you, but they grab you and say, you need to do this or get in this spot. And the coaches really didn't have to deal with all that. I don't fault the kids today for that. It's just different. And uh, like I said, I'll sound old when I talk about it, but I learned a lot about sports, honestly, at Hoover Park, um, playing against guys that were 35 and 40. Um, now, I think you, you will probably remember, and you could say this, I think if you go back, I probably hold the record for flagrant fouls. Uh, it might be, <laughs> might be Danny Nally and I fighting for that. But um, I think that, you know, you were there a lot, and, and I learned a lot of that at Hoover Park. Those guys, they taught me what a real foul was at the park, but it wasn't a real foul in IHSA. But anyway, I, I just think that that's kind of missing, the, the ability for kids to lead each other, to um, stand up to each other, I think there's the, the ones that want to, and I see it in pockets, but I just don't see it like we had it when we were coming up. So that's a big change in athletics. The other change, like I already mentioned, the talent level of athletics is phenomenal now. Uh, fundamentals could get cleaned up a little bit, but the talent's amazing. I mean, it's just incredible. Um, I think the time the kids put in nowadays has changed a lot as well, but uh, some of that's opportunity. Some of those opportunities obviously weren't around when I was there. And I'm sure there have been many more right. additional ones since you played as well. But uh, I saw some of the leadership qualities in you even back in fifth and sixth grade yeah. basketball when I had the pleasure of coaching you yeah. and uh, Mike Cook. Well, I appreciate you say pleasure because there's a lot of people who would, who would probably say more of a struggle. No, no, absolutely not. I mean, how else could I draw up a play and you go out and hit a three off the very oh, first yeah. time we ran yeah. it? So, yeah. you know. Yeah, I can't ever question that. Yeah. But, the the uh, bad part about that was by the time I got into high school, they were telling me, don't shoot it. That there's <laughs> people that shoot. When, when I would shoot it, and Coach Boyster would scream, no. And, and if, <laughs> luckily, if it went in, I wouldn't get pulled out of the game. But no. Um, who are some of the people that influenced you that made you want to get into education um, as you grew up? Um, well, I'd start off with uh, my mom, um, you know, she taught at Delcom and at Eaton and Albany for, you know, again, 30, 35 plus years. And uh, I was with mom all the time. And if we weren't at home, we were at the school. So I definitely say my mom, um, my grandmother, um, Gladys Inman, she taught in Blackford County schools for, I believe most of her, if not all her career um, at, at different schools. And so um, just seeing how, Honestly, they were respected by both communities, um, and I, I learned to respect educators right off the bat. So they were, they were definitely ones that got me involved in education. Then as I, I moved up through, um, I have my favorite teacher is Mrs. Robinson, uh, Diane Robinson, who was my kindergarten teacher at an art teacher. So she's the first one that got me an art at Eaton Elementary. And then when I came over, I came over in fifth grade to Blackford. And my time at Blackford, I had a ton of them, but... Uh, um, Mrs. Brown, I uh, believe it was Rose Brown at the yep. uh, junior high, uh, might have been one of my all-time favorite. I, I was a bit of a handful in middle school, and she, uh, she set me straight right away. And so I, I absolutely respected her. Um, had a great art teacher at the junior high. Mrs. At that time, it was Mrs. Hatch, Mrs. Kelly Meska. Uh, okay. Now, she was a great teacher and inspired me. And then when I got into high school, it was really coaches and, and teachers. Um, Mark Soselski was a big influence on me. I think he's doing amazing things up in, uh, up around the region, maybe a little bit in Illinois with uh, his broadcasting. I was big into that radio and TV, but he also coached. And uh, so he was one. Um, and then out, those are my education people. And then outside of, it was coaches. Um, you, Gene Rains, um, Hillbilly, Rick Clay. Um, I had uh, Dean Dodd. When I came over um, from my, he was my first coach in minor league. And, um, you know, and then I had, uh, I always laugh a little bit. I had Bob Banner and everybody <laughs> knows Bob. I had Bob yeah. Banner and Babe Ruth. And I, man, I got stories about Bob. I, we did some, we did some <laughs> interesting things. I, I always remember the potato play. Uh, yeah. that, we were in. Uh, that was probably one of the most unique moments of my career. Um, 
and then when I got into high school, um, Brian Roush, Coach Roush, um, and uh, he had me as a senior, and he had a difficult time. He came in at, I think he was 25 at the time, uh, one of the youngest coaches in the, in the state. And, and you look at the success that he's had, um, being superintendent now at Wapahani or uh, Liberty Perry. But, you know, he had eight seniors that he had to come in and inherit that were 18, and he's 25. And, and he worked through it. Um, so, uh, and then uh, I'd say Coach, Coach Teets, uh, being around him, and Coach Foister. Those were big guys. And um, I'm probably leaving somebody out. But then I think after that, the biggest influence I had, I talked about Wayne and Steve Baker in administration. But uh, probably my best friend right now, uh, John McLaughlin. John, John has had more influence on me in life. Um, he's like a brother. Um, I'd do anything for him, and I know he'd do anything for me. But, I, I mean, he's our basketball coach now at West L. He's, he's the winningest coach in West L history now, and uh, he's doing some great things for us, and I'm so proud of him. And he's been a huge influence on me. And, honestly, you know, without – and he was at Jay County when I started in administration with Craig uh, Teagle. Yeah. And uh, without him as a friend uh, and as a mentor, I don't know if I'd be where I am. So, you know – he was a big part of things. So, and then outside of education, outside of coaching, uh, best person in my life is my dad. Um, he means a lot to me. Uh, he was hard on me and I appreciate it now. Um, some people would probably say he's way, he was way too hard on me, but I don't think he was, I think he could have been a little harder if he wanted to be, but I wouldn't be where I'm sitting today if it wasn't for my dad. So those are my influences. Those are the people, um, and uh, if you ever want to hear about the potato play, you know, you know just ask. <laughs> I remember. <laughs> Bob, I'll just say this. I'll just say this. Bob didn't make it through the rest of the game after the potato <laughs> play. He was asked to leave, uh, I believe, by your dad. <laughs> probably. Probably. But, but, <laughs> but I, won't, I won't be afraid to mention that your dad asked me to leave a game one time, too. <laughs> I do remember that. Uh, hey, my dad teched me in an elementary basketball yeah, game, so, yeah. you know. There was no, was there was no limits. limits to his officiating, yes. Correct. Um, just one last thing. Obviously, I got to be a part of the senior parade around here with my daughter being a 2020 graduate, and that seems to be a, uh, uh, an activity a lot of schools have taken on. I know you did as well. Just talk a little bit about how that went and how you think maybe that helped your seniors through this rough time. Yeah, it was it was the best thing that we did up to that point and could have done at that point. And I think one of the best things we've ever done at Westdale as a community. It, they, it, what was amazing to me is how many people came out. I, I didn't expect that. And um, the outpouring. And now you see it in your district. You see it at uh, Brian Roush's district. You see it all over. And it just shows you – and it, it was really – it really – took a bad situation for those seniors. And, and I think a lot of them were just awestruck at how much everybody empathized with them and understood, I can't imagine what would happen if my senior year got taken away. So if all we can do is give them a parade, I mean, that's the least we can do. Um, and we're trying some other things, but I think every district honoring their seniors, it just shows it, it, that, that senior year, that 13th basically year of school, it, everything culminates and it would have been easy for a lot of schools just to say, well, thank you. You know, we're not going to do anything, but it just shows you what public education really is about. If you just, it, it, I know it's so simple, but if you just take it down and you look at what every district did. And the other thing I'll say is look at how, look at that and look at how important small rural school districts are to the state of Indiana, but anywhere and our students. Would you get the same type of thing? Now, Muncie did it too, and they did it very effectively, and they're a larger district. But I'm just saying it, 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 it really brought tears to your eyes to see how honored these kids are. And um, it's, it makes you proud of every community around. Um, and so I think that it was the best thing that these schools could do, and I think it speaks volumes of the communities. And really, you watch too much news right now, and you see so many negatives those parades should just have been broadcast live so everybody could see the real positives out there. And uh, I think that, that, that always sets well with me and makes me think, you know, overall people are good. People are really good. And, 
and look what we'll do for kids and what we're willing to do. And I mean, we would, I think every school district and, you know, you're a board board member, every school district goes into every decision. I truthfully believe, you know, that every administrator, teacher, board member, they're doing what they think is best for kids. They really are. Sometimes it may not align with everybody and it may, it may not be agreement, but I think every individual is doing what they think is best for kids. And that just shows you right there in that, those parades. Absolutely. Well, I want to congratulate you on everything you've done and, and give you and your administrative team a big round of applause for how you had to handle everything, everybody, how everybody's had to handle yep. this situation and, and uh, good luck with uh, how things may go in the fall as we still yeah. really don't know. Uh, concrete. Yeah. It's, it's, it's so fluid. You just don't know. You don't, it, it could change tomorrow. And that's why, you know, I'll be honest with you. A lot of us, a lot of people want to know what we're going to do. But right now it's one of these where you don't want to be first to this. You don't want to come, you come out with your plan first because you could come out with it now in June. And by the time we roll in on August, it, it'd be half of the stuff wouldn't even be needed. Right. So um, I will say this, every superintendent in the area is talking to each other and everybody's trying to do, this is one where you want to, you want to be together as a team uh, in your area. So, when these plans come rolling out, you know, you see what the DOE sends out, you see what the other things send out. And, and Dr. McCormick's done a fabulous job through all of this. And that, that 38 page document that came out, you got to understand she has to come out with something. Um, I wouldn't say that she truthfully believes on every single thing on there, but um, I think people need to take a deep breath, just relax. Uh, there will be some type of, Face to, I mean, there's obviously going to be face to face. There will be some type of online option for those students who have underlying health concerns or their parents have concerns. Um, the goal is to educate all and figure out what that looks like. But I think by hopefully second semester, we can get everybody back in and get back to some some of what we are good at, and that is you know face to face interaction, sports, those types of things. So. Well, again, I appreciate you coming on today. Um, wish you yep. well in the upcoming months as you plan for the start of the school year. And I am sure once I get back to full time being your uh, uh, salesperson over in that area, yep. I'll get to see you quite frequently. Yep. Absolutely. Can't wait. Yep. I want to thank well, you for the opportunity, Chris. Thanks for having me on. Uh, I saw, like I said, I saw the list that, of people you were talking to and I and, you know, it's humbling to be even considered to talk to you about this because you've got some great people to talk to. So I mean, I'm excited to see what you do with this. Well, I appreciate it. And until uh, next time, this is a peanut gallery signing off. There we go.